Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, race number five at Churchill Downs on Saturday as the grade three Matt win stakes for three-year-olds traveling a mile in a 16th. Breeders' Cup not too far away. You're going to want to stock up on that Breeders' Cup merchandise. DRF is going to help you out. When you purchase $30 or more at breederscupshop.com and enter the code DRF2PACK, you get a two-pack of those beautiful commemorative Breeders' Cup glasses. Let's take a look at the field for the Matt Wynn Stakes, going a mile and a sixteenth again for three-year-olds. Mr. Money, I think, are deserving two-to-one favor. He was very good in the Pat Day mile last time out. They cut him back to a one-turn mile. I love the way Gabriel Saez could have gone outside. He found a hole splitting horses entering the far turn. He went. He took the lead. Three furlongs from home and it was over. He ran great last time. Um, you know, because not only did he do all the things that you said, but that pace was pretty solid in there. He kept forward the entire way. He always traveled strongly in there. Once he split horses, it was all over. Um, you know, I guess the the one question that I would have, and maybe you can answer this, you know, didn't he really just improve because they cut him back to a one term? I know what he broke. I know that he won around this distance on this track um, at the end of last year, but that was a maiden win. Um, I feel like two turn races and going longer aren't really what this horse wants. I don't think he's as good in that kind of a situation. So. They stretch him back out around two turns here, and they face a pretty good field at the end of the day. I mean, do you want this horse as the favorite? I'm going to use him, but I, I don't have any problem betting against I'll, this horse. I'll respectively disagree by saying you I think... You don't have to respectively disagree. You uh, can just disagree. All right, I disrespectfully <laughs> disagree. Uh, I think that Mr. Money, uh, it's too early to tell whether he can get another 16th of a mile in two turns. Yes, it was a maiden race. He won at Churchill, but look at the fields he was in against in his other two-turn starts. He's 40-1 to one in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He's 50-1 to one in the Louisiana Derby. It's not like he was blown out in both of those races. It wasn't. And uh, we've got people what, six, uh, eight, and ten lengths? It was fine. I would be very concerned about the fact that in both the Breeders' Cup and the Risen Star, where this horse was in good position in both of those, listen, he doesn't have to win those races, but in both of those races, he shortened stride very badly at the end of those races, and he, where he could have been third or fourth, and he wound up, you know, seventh at the end of the day. I mean, I'm very concerned about how far this horse wants to go. Well, he did take care of the I hog. I bet him in one of those He did races. take That's care the of the hog last time yeah. out, and Hog Creek Hustle returned to win the Woody Stevens. Now a grade one winner, Hog Creek Hustle. 95 buyer speed figure. I think this time form U.S. pace projector works nicely for Mr. Money as we throw it up right now for the Matt Wynn Stakes. Nick's, Nick's go is going to make the yeah. front. If Mr. Money can sit off Nick's go, and Nick's go can't remember what he used to be as a two-year-old, there's a very good chance that Mr. Money can grab the early lead, especially if there's a favor, if there's a blue bar scenario favoring horses on or near the lead. Do you uh, agree with this uh, pace projector? Do you think Nolo Contesta should be aggressively ridden out of there? I mean, I'd like to see him get forward. I think he will get forward in this race. That's basically how they've been riding him um, in Southern California. So he, I think he'll be up close as well, maybe in a similar position to where uh, Mr. Money is. But I do think they got it right. I think Nick's go, you just got to put him on the lead and, and just hope he can remember what he used to be. Nick's go ran so well as a two-year-old, winning the Breeders' Futurity, running second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and then just the wheels came off. Last time out in the Lexingdale, it was a better effort. Now, maybe he just loves Keeneland, and that's his, his favorite track, but that's true. he held on for a piece. Owendale was a good winner. He came back to run third in the Preakness with a 96 fire. I think there is a chance that if they just leave him alone on the lead in a blue bar situation, he can beat this field. Yeah, if he gets absolutely loose, he can beat this field because he's got races that make him really tough in here. He just hasn't run, you know, one of his good ones um, since the end of last year. So it's a real question of, you know, you're starting to think now that those two grade ones in October and November, that they were a little bit fluky, and he's just never going to run another race like that. But this horse is talented. Let's talk about Nolo Contesto, the number three. I loved his maiden win. Way back on January the 4th, he beat a horse named Omaha Beach that day. I think you've heard of him. Mm -hmm. He ran very good to wear down Omaha Beach at the, uh, in, the, in the late stages of that yeah, race. Did. And then he ran okay behind Roadster in that optional claimer. And then he ran okay, I guess, again, last time out in the Santa Anita Derby behind Roadster. It's interesting that they did a little procedure with him, and he's going to race as a first-time Ridgling yeah, in the Matt win. They were going to run him in the affirmed. I think they took a look at Roadster again, and they said, let's run here for a little more money. Yeah, I, I think that's right. We'll, we'll see what happens. You know, his Sanity to Derby, you know, I guess it was a little disappointing. At the end of the day, you know, maybe he just didn't get necessarily the right ride that day where they got kind of aggressive with him and went after the pace. And obviously that was a race where, you know, Roadster just got that very patient ride and made the last run, and that was the best run. Um, other than that race, I, I think he's run well in all of his races. You know, 
I guess I realized that when he was beating Omaha Beach, everybody was beating Omaha Beach. As far as I can tell, Omaha Beach is like now because he hasn't run. Now he's like the greatest horse that ever lived. Um, we'll see what happens when he comes back, but he was certainly getting good the last time we saw him. I, I like this horse. I think he'll get a good trip in this race. I think of the field, he's the most likely horse to show improvement on Saturday. Yeah, Drastic five-point buyer improvement. Maybe that was the race last time for Mr. Money. Maybe this is the time good for call. Nolo Contesto. Let's talk a little bit about Signal Man. He's a nice horse. First, I want to do with the Nolo Contesto formulator fact. 27% positive ROI. Three-year-olds only in dirt routes off two to four-month layoffs. You don't worry about the layoff too much with the Sadler Barn. It's just having a sensational year after their sort of groundbreaking yeah, year in 2018. Signal Man is a very underappreciated three-year-old. He's by one of your favorite stallions in general quarters. He's multiple grade one placed. He's a grade two winner over this course and distance. And last time out in the Preakness, well, it was the Preakness and just, you know, it was too tough for him. He's the kind of horse I think that needs a little bit of pace. I think if yes, you leave yeah. him alone and let him make one run, he'll be fine. But with this pace scenario, it worries me. Yeah, I wonder if it'll set up well for him. You know, I think he's fine. He sort of is what he is at this point, and I think he does. I think he is at his best if you can just let him settle and then make one run. I don't know how well that'll play in this race, but you know what? His good race is pretty good, um, and with even just a little improvement, he could be there at the end of this I race. I thought his bluegrass was just fine, was especially fine. if you right. believe there was really speed favoring no, nature of the track. They tried to stay close. Hernandez did the right thing, and he ended up finishing a solid enough third. I do need to step forward. The one Limonite's really going to need that pace projector to be wrong because if there is just the epitome of a one-run closer. It's Limonite, who came from way, way out of it over a sloppy track last time out to win a non-winners of one other then. He ran okay behind Signal Man in the Kentucky. Kentucky Jockey Club, but wasn't that just one of those races with that big pace and it came yeah. apart a little bit at the end? May not be the case here. I thought he ran okay in that race. I thought his Risen Star actually was a little deceptive. He got into a lot of traffic in that race, and I think he ran better than it looks. But, you know, with his running style, he just needs to catch all the breaks in races like this. Perhaps Proverb will be a little aggressive under Calvin Burrell here. That's what they tried to do last time out in that Oaklawn Invitational. Opened up a clear lead, turning for home. And just that distance, I think, was a little bit too much for him. He gets a cut back here. I think he can be closer to the pace. And at 15 to 1, it looks like yeah. he's moving forward. And that race, uh, last race, produced a couple next out winners. I think he really is improving at the right time. And I, I'm with you. If, I, if he was mine, I would just tell Burrell to go here and try and get right up on the pace in this race because the two best races he's run are the races where they put him close. Armistice Day is the seven, and I understand why they've tried synthetic and turf because he's by declaration of war. But wasn't Harmony Law just a pure dirt horse? I think she won the ballerina. She was a, she was a really good dirt horse. And Declaration of War is not bad on dirt. Wins 15% on the dirt. He's a half to a turf stakes winner. This is going to be his first start on dirt. Obviously, he has to do better, but at least you know he's got a little pedigree. He's got a really big, that's a really good family, Harmony Lodge included. Um, she was more of a sprinter, so you know you do have to worry about how far this horse wants to go, but dirt is not supposed to be his excuse. I guess it's a real question of whether you think he's good enough to go with horses like this right now. Second time gelding for the seven armistice day. Let's look at our top picks for the grade three Matt win stakes. I saw enough for Mr. Money last time out to uh, impress me. Uh, I, I think he can get a good trip sitting just off the pace. He obviously likes Churchill Downs. Maybe the distance will be too far for him, but he's won at a mile and a 16th in the past. I'm not asking him to go a mile and a quarter. I got I'm just asking him to go 16th for a I mile. You. You're going with no low contesto, a uh, little West Coast class uh, relief for the three horse, uh, and I think a three to one's a fair price. Yeah, I agree. What, three to one, I would take on him. I'm not, a, I'm not way against Mr. Money. I really like him as a horse. I just prefer him going shorter. I'll try and beat him with this horse. You're going three to six. I'm going Six three five. I'm using three six in multis. It's race number five. The Grade Three Matt Win Stakes. Remember the offer from DRF.com and BreedersCupShop.com. Purchase thirty dollars or more at BreedersCupShop.com. Enter the code DRF two pack and magically those two beautiful glasses will appear on your doorstep, hopefully intact. The Grade Three Matt Win Stakes is race number five, and it has an approximate post time of eight oh three Eastern. Best of luck.